All right, so now let's continue further and this time look at properties of the cross product. So if we apply theorems one and two to the standard basis vectors i, j, and k using theta equals pi over two and the right hand rule we obtain and we're going to obtain a bunch of formulas for this. And remember theorems one and two, so theorem one is just the orthogon, orthogon, orthogonality or, or the pronounce better, orthogonal, orthogonality. Principle. So theorem two is the uh, distance one, which is using that parallelogram uh, a b sine theta, and then theorem one is the vector a cross b is orthogonal to a b, a and b, or yeah, or perpendicular to it. So let's write, let's use those two theorems and then find some properties of the i j k basis vector. So we have the property one. So we have the theorem one, a cross b. is perpendicular, let's put this like this, perpendicular to, uh, let's put that better one here, to A and B. Then theorem two is that the length of A cross B is the parallelogram, equals to A cross B, I mean, uh, a uh, length of a times length of b, and then sine. In this case, we're going to be dealing with pi over two or ninety degrees because basis vectors are all separated by ninety degrees of pi over two, and uh, pi over two. The sine pi over two is just equal to one. So this just equals two a cross b. And then this is going to be. Uh, this is equal to all one because these are all, all the standard basis vectors i, j, k all have lengths one. So one times one times one equals to one. And this is equals to one since, and I'll put a uh, since, I'll put it actually here since, I'll put it here. So since, uh, since i, length of i of the standard basis equals to length of J is better uh J equals length of K like that, which equals to one. Alright, so since they all equal to one, and yeah, so you're just gonna have a one times one equals to one, and this sign pi over two is equals to one, and again you can recall that. I'll go back to our drawing here of the sine one. This length is one. This this uh, this is a pi over two, like that. So it's pi over two it is right there, ninety degrees, and that sine pi over two is equal to one. All right, and yeah, that's what we have. And now let's draw our standard basis vectors, uh, like here. So we have, I'll write it like this, make it a bit smaller. So this is our y axis. This is our z. This is our x. Now this is going to be i is a, yeah the, the unit length of i there, and then the unit one of uh, the j is right here. This is j, and then k is above here. K, and they're all uh, yeah they're all uh, put it like this. Where should I put this? Or right, here, just fix that up here. So I put the K like down there. I uh, so I put the K up higher. So it doesn't get any confusion. And this is the J right there. All right, so now let's do the property. So I cross J. And using the right hand rule. So I cross J. Remember the angle is going to be like this using the right hand rule. Right hand is like this. So, that, so if it curls inwards this way, the thumb's going to be pointing up. Yeah, so from uh, I, this can be like this. And again, all of these, uh, all these angles, let's put another thing here. All these angles are pi over two. So theta is equal to pi over two, and theta is equal to pi over two. Theta equals to pi over two, and so on. 
and another one here, theta is equal to pi over 2. From all these angles, these are all 90 degrees. And so on. I'll just, um, yeah, you know, it's pretty straightforward. So everything's 90 degrees, all of these. Or pi over 2 radians. All right, so I cross J, using the right-hand rule, K is equal to K. Like that. And now if we go J cross K, uh, this is angles like this, right angle, the thumb's gonna stick out this way. If you just use your right hand, so you're gonna get J cross K is equal to I. Now the next one is K uh, cross I, and then using right hand rule is gonna be pointing to J. Uh, K cross I equals to J. You can use a cross product with the actual unit unit terms of it, like one zero zero and zero one zero and zero zero one, and you'll get the same thing. Now the next setup is notice what happens here. Now instead of going here, we go backwards. We'll go uh, J to here. So then, in other words, you have to put your thumb downwards because you're you're going with right hand using right hand rules you'll have j cross i equals to negative k because the right hand rule points downwards now the next one is uh k cross j k cross j is going to be this way you're going backwards and using right hand rule it's going to be pointing this way negative i so notice how it go, always goes negative. Negative i. Like that. And then the last one, i cross k. So i cross k, you're going to go from here to here. And if you point your arrows there, it's going to go backwards. Your thumb's going to be sticking out the negative side of j. Equals to negative j. So these are the properties of the standard, using the standard basis vectors. All right, so now uh, from this, observe that uh, when you flip around the cross uh, product directions, you don't get the same answer. So in other words, observe that I cross J, for example. Uh, so I cross J, this one here, is not equal to this. So I cross J is not equal to J cross uh, I, like that. Yeah, so with this property, because it doesn't have it, uh, thus the cross product is uh, is said to be not commun commutative or uh, commutative. Yeah, so you can't just rearrange it and do that. And note also that if you had something like this, I cross and then bracket I cross J, this equals to, all of you know the properties, I cross J is equal to K. This is the same thing as writing using the brackets first, cross k. And then i cross k is right here is equal to negative j. Negative j. But, but we have, well, if instead of doing this way, if you put the, if you switch the brackets here and here, like this, instead of, instead of that, you'll had i, uh, I'll put a but like this, so i, cross i, uh, this, then, then cross j, this equals to, well, i cross i, we already showed that a cross a is equal to zero, just, it's just the, uh, it's the same thing. Yeah, it, that was, I think I was in the example two or example one, let's go scroll up, where's that example, it was right over, yeah, right over here, example two. So a cross a is equal to zero for any vector in the set V3 or vectors in three dimensions. All right, going back to this. So we have this. So in other words, this means this is a zero vector cross j and zero vector cross z z anything zero. I mean, any other vector is going to be always zero. So in other words, these don't equal each other. Yeah, so then these do not equal, so I'll just leave it like that. Those aren't equal. Yeah, so this is uh, said to be, uh, well, this is considered as, uh, so the associ associative law for multiplication does not usually hold. 
that is in general, so in general this doesn't isn't the case for cross products, A cross B pr uh, bracket cross C is uh, typically not equal to A cross, uh, yeah, A cross and then B cross C in brackets. Like that. Typically, you can't just flip things around like typical multiplication laws. All right. So, uh, although these these uh, don't match up with typical multiplication laws, uh, however, some of the usual laws of algebra do hold for cross products. And the following theorem summarizes the properties of vector products. And here is theorem three. So, if A, B, and C are vectors, and uh, and, and then unbolded C is a scalar, then A cross B equals to negative b cross uh, a, that's the property one, and again, that was similar to this right here, we switched it around, that all becomes negative. And then uh, number two is c uh, times a cross b, this is in the bracket, equals to c, you could take the c out of uh, all of these cross products, equals c times bracket a cross b, and this equals to a cross, and then uh, c inside the bracket. C and B inside this bracket there. And then property three is A cross and then bracket B plus C. And then this equals two. Well, you could multiply this out and expand it out just like multiplication. A cross B plus A cross C. And then property four, A plus B, and then all of that cross C is equal to, again, expand this out from this side, A cross C plus um, B cross uh, B, B, B cross C, similar to the property three. And then property five is A dot B cross C is equal to A cross B dot C. That's a very interesting property. And then uh, A cross uh, and then B cross C is equal to A dot C times B minus A dot B uh, times C. <laughs> That's interesting. So you can write these in terms of uh, dot products there. All right, and uh, these properties can be proved by writing the vectors in terms of their components and using the definition of a cross product. So we give the proof of property five here and leave the remaining proofs as exercises at the end of this video and I'll prove those later. So yeah, calculus book didn't prove those. I had to go do them on my own. All right, also because the solution value wasn't giving me the answer. All right, so let's take a look at proof of property five. And property five is right here, a dot b cross c equals a cross b dot c. That's a very interesting one. Let's just write it down. So a dot b cross c equals two, and it's gonna be a, now this equals to a cross b, and this is in brackets, dot c. All right, so now that we have this, and uh, let's write out, let's say first, let's say we have our vectors as typical, so if a vector is equal to, and has components a1, a2, A3, like this. And then uh, the B vector, components B1, B2, B3. And then the C1 is over here, equals to, I'll put a bracket, uh, C vector is equal to C1, C2, C3. Like that. Then, so if we have that, then what we get is, uh, let's say the dot product now. I'll put it if, and then let's put it then right here. A dot B cross C, this equals two. Uh, and again, remember the dot product, we just multiply each term. So the first one would be A1, and then the first term of this B cross C, which is a vector. And we already know this, and if you memorize it, it's just gonna be our B2, C3, minus, and then, so we always go two, three, then it goes three, two. Three, two, C2. Then maybe B3, C2. Yeah, next one you could uh, subtract, uh, but I'm gonna just put add there and then flip around uh, the uh, direction of it. So we're gonna have the A2, so this uh, the second component, multiplied by the second component of this cross product, Remember, uh, initially it's supposed to be a it, instead of it actually b instead of going b, it's supposed to be uh, negative b one and then c three minus uh, b three c one, 
I'm going to get rid of this negative, put a plus, uh, make this plus, make this negative. So put this first. So if we go to B3, C1 minus B1, C3. Let's write it like that. And uh, the next one is going to be the third component. It's going to be A3 multiplied by, well, we know this one, B1, C2 minus B2, C1. And now what we're going to do is multiply this all out. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take out, instead of this A1, A2, A3, we're going to take out the Cs to, to make it look like this dot product. And let's just get rid of this out, multiply this out. So we got A1 and then A2 minus, I actually forgot to put the uh, C3 there. So it's C3 there. A1, A2, C3, and then minus right here, A1, B3. C2, and the next one's going to be plus A2, B3, C1, minus A2, B1, C3, then plus A3, B1, C2, minus A3, A3, B2, C1, like that. And now what we're going to do is factor out all the similar ones, and we'll do the C1s first, C1s like that. This equals to uh, factor this out, and let's we'll put that C on the other side. So we're going to have this A two B three minus A three B two C one, and now the next one is going to be well C three, or actually C two C two C two like that. Next one's going to be plus. This is going to be A three B one minus. A1, B3, C2, and then likewise, I'm just going to shift this over, make some room actually, shift this over, plus, and this is going to be, uh, the next one's going to be the C3, so the C3 is going to be A1, B2, minus A2, B1, C3. All right, in other words, well, now we're back to our square one here, and this is just the uh, cross product dot, uh, and the cross product is all these bracket terms, exactly the same one, A3, B1, number this one is B3, C1, B1, C3, this is A3, B1, A1, B3, etc. So this is A cross B, and then dot C, those are the C terms out there. So in other words, this equals to, uh, this equals to a cross b bracket dot c. So we just solve uh, property uh, five. That's equals to this one. Yes, fascinating stuff.